Hi guys, uh, I've been asked by a few of my subscribers to make a video on uh, Polaris and how to solve questions uh, that involve uh, this celestial body here. So here goes the video. So I've just introduced a little bit of a background about Polaris and then I've uh, used an example to show you how to solve questions uh, regarding Polaris. So watch this video and if you have any questions, please write to me in the comments all right so polaris uh, is the topic today and uh, it is a, a star uh, of very high declination all right so if you don't know what declination is declination is uh, equivalent to an observer's latitude in the celestial sphere so just like our position on the celestial sphere on the earth's sphere is marked by the latitude and longitude um, position on the celestial sphere is also marked by something equivalent so the latitudes equivalent is declination the longitudes equivalent is r angles all right so polaris is a star of very high declination uh, around 89 degrees and 9 minutes and uh, hence its azimuth is very nearly north at all times so when we say azimuth is it's bearing from the observer zenith so if i project your position from the earth's uh, sphere earth's, earth's sphere to celestial sphere or earth's surface to celestial sphere if i project the observer's position that observer's position in the celestial sphere is called zenith so your bearing from the bearing of the polaris is uh, or rather polaris bearing from your bearing is uh, very nearly north at all times because of its high declination and therefore the position line uh, which results is east west so if you don't know what i mean that means that uh, imagine this uh, to be a celestial sphere and your meridian is here in the celestial sphere you are said observer zenith right this is your this is you and this is and then uh, polaris is here denoted by x it's a celestial body and it's almost bearing north of you so it's not exactly bearing north so i cannot i cannot assume that it's exactly bearing north but it's kind of almost bearing north and that's why if this is your bearing if this is your bearing position line is actually perpendicular to your bearing and that's why your position line is east west 0902270 all right, that's what it this means so although it's not exactly north of you but it's so nearly north that we can assume that it's almost north and that's why your bearing is east west another thing you have to remember is that polaris cannot be seen from the southern hemisphere all right or from very low latitudes in the northern hemisphere so from very low latitudes in the northern hemisphere and uh, nothing from southern hemisphere you cannot see polaris at all because in southern hemisphere your polaris is below the horizon so if it's below the horizon it's not visible to your eyes and in northern hemisphere although it is above the horizon it is too close to the horizon for observation by a sextant so it is so close to the uh, horizon that uh, you cannot observe it by a sextant all right so the altitude is not enough for you to measure it and use it for any kind of calculations so uh, let's say that uh, uh, we go into a question and say if you get a question regarding the polaris this is what a question will go like all right so let's assume that uh, on 1st of september 1982 it's morning on your ship so am means morning it's a morning sight morning on your ship and you are in a dead reckoning position or an estimated position or dr position of 18 degrees north and 178 degrees 11 minutes east uh, the sextant altitude of the pole star was 18 degrees 47.4 a pole star is also polaris so this pole star means that it's a polaris question your chronometer time is given to you and the chronometer error is given to you as one minute 18 seconds slow the height of i is 12.5 meters and index error is 1.6 minutes on the arc all right what you have to find first is the direction of the position line and a position through which to draw it all right the second thing you have to find is if the azimuth was 001 degrees compass that means if the bearing was 001 degrees by compass and the variation was 1.3 degrees east what would be the deviation so a couple of things to find out all right so let's start with the questions the first part of the question is the chronometer time and we have to solve the ambiguity of the chronometer time so if the chronometer time given to you is 5 hours 2108 seconds that could also mean it's 5 in the morning or 5 in the evening which you will get by adding 12 hours to the hours so that's how a chronometer time goes so for academic purposes only uh, 5 hours 21 minutes and 8 seconds could also be 5 in the uh, evening all right so that's why we add 12 hours to the hour column and then 
we get two options so it could either be either or so we have to figure out which one is the correct chronometer time so that we can get the gmt we'll do that in stages all right then you apply the error the error was slow 0 1 minutes 18 seconds slow whenever the error is slow you will add the error that means the chronometer is lagging behind if it was fast you would subtract the error so in both the cases you add the same error of 1 minute and 18 seconds all right once you do that you get gmt but you get two cases of gmt so you have to figure out which is the correct case of gmt so to that you apply the zone now the zone depends on your longitude all right here your longitude is east but to get the zone you have to use the concept of lit or longitude in time lit stands for longitude in time so for do that just divide your dr longitude by 15 in this case it's 178 degrees 11 minutes you divide it by 15 you get 11 hours 52 minutes 44 seconds now lit can be written in hours minutes and seconds but when it comes to zone you have to use a whole number or a round number that's because that's the practical way of timekeeping all right ships in a particular zone have the same time you cannot have time as per your individual longitude because that's not practical for any kind of business to happen in ports right so that's why because 11 hours 52 minutes and 44 seconds is closer to 12 12 hours i will round it off to a whole number of 12 hours and then i will add the zone correction to my gmt why do i add it because when i'm in east longitude i am ahead of gmt that is that means that whenever i'm in east longitude the time on my ship would be ahead of gmt gmt is behind me if i'm in west longitude gmt would be ahead of me all right so that's why when i add it in one case i get 17 hours 22 minutes and 26 seconds and the other one i get 5 hours 22 minutes and 26 seconds now how do i know what is the correct zone time now what do i mean by zone time for those of you who don't know zone time is also known as ship's mean time or smt that means that is the time kept on your ship on your watches on your ship's clocks all right now in the question itself it says it's, it's morning on my ship it's am on my ship that's the hint given to me that means and it's first of september 92 am out of the two cases i see that the it's am on my ship in the second case only here it's first of september here all right so in this case it's not am it's evening already so this my first case cannot be correct because it's pm on on, on in the first case it's am only in the second case so if it's am on my ship on 1st of september then i write 1st of september next to the am time and then i figure out that the gmt is it the same uh, day or is the previous day or next day and i can see that it's the previous day because i've added 12 hours from five o'clock in the evening so that means it's 31st of august here at gmt and i've added 12 hours to make it the next day all right that's why it's 1st september on my ship but it's still 31st August evening at the GMT because I am 12 hours ahead of GMT. So although it's 1st September on my ship, it's still 31st August at GMT. All right. And that's why my correct GMT time would be 31st of August, 17 hours, 22 minutes and 26 seconds. That's my correct GMT. Now, if you didn't get this part, just watch my video on solving the ambiguity of the chronometer time and hopefully it should be very clear to you. All right. Be very careful with the dates now once you get the date and the time of gmt you go into the 1992 almanac all right and find out gha aries for 17 hours then you find out the increment for 22 minutes and 26 seconds i'll show you how to do that and increment is always added all right the word itself means addition or increase so we'll add the increment once we add the increment we get gha for 17 hours 22 minutes and 26 seconds so let's go into the nautical almanac and find out the gha for 31st of august 17 hours and then the increment for 22 minutes and 26 seconds so gha for 31st august uh, if i can show you here is uh, the red pen here this is 31st of august 92 all right 31st is here for 17 hours your gha aries aries is here for stars you always look at aries this is your gha 2357.3 all right you don't need any other information here and then you go into the nautical almanac for uh for i think our minutes was 22 minutes was it oh, i forgot the minutes uh, it was uh, 22 minutes and 26 seconds so what we do is we go into the nautical almanac increments page 
for 22 minutes and 26 seconds there you go so this will be my 22 minutes and this is my 26 seconds here right uh, and I will look under Aries so that is 537.4 should be my increment so I go back here and I apply that 537.4 that's right that's what I've written here right then I add the increment to my GHA I get my GHA Aries for 17 hours 22 minutes 26 seconds then we have our DR longitude now what to do with the longitude whenever longitude is east you will add it because the rule of thumb is longitude east GHA is the least what do I mean by GHA least? GHA is least lesser than than LHA. That's what I mean. So whenever you see longitude east, GHA should be least. That means you should add the longitude to make GHA lesser than the LHA. So whenever you add the longitude in this case, you see a value, you get a value of 418 degrees 55.7. Now this value can never be more than 360. LHA cannot be more than 360 degrees. So whenever you see the value is more than 360, you subtract it from 360 and you get the correct LHA which is 58 degrees 55.7 alright once you get the LHA start resolving the sextant altitude sextant altitude given to you in the question is 18 degrees 47.4 minutes index error given to you is 1.6 minutes on the arc whenever it's on the arc you subtract it if it was off the arc you would add it so whenever it's on the arc you subtract it you get the observed altitude as 18 degrees 45.8 this this word stands for observed in case my handwriting or my acronym is not making sense to you then you have a height of i of 12.5 meters which is also called the dip correction so you go into the nautical almanac for 12.5 meters again so if i go into the nautical almanac and i go into the height of i page this is normally the third or the fourth page in your nautical almanac all right so this is a digital copy so i have adjusted it in such a way that it comes closer to increments normally in your nautical almanac it will be third or the fourth page all right so 6.5 or was it 12.5 was it, it was 12.5 meters well so this is sorry this is your height of high correction all right you can see height of high written here deep written here and 12.5 will be somewhere here between 12.2 and 12.6 so your height of high correction is minus 6.2 now this is all given in meters this column is in feet so go into the meters column and between 12.2 and 12.6 will be 12.5 no interpolation is required you can straight away take the figure and put it here so 12.5 it's minus 6.2 height of high correction is always negative never positive you get something called the apparent altitude so app alt stands for apparent altitude as 18 degrees 39.6 and then you apply the correction of total correction where do i get the total correction from you get into the same table so with an apparent altitude of 18 degrees 39.6 you go into the same tables where you got your dip from all right so if this is your dip you total correction you get is from here you can see the stars and planets column is here this is the apparent altitude value 18 degrees 39.6 will be somewhere between here 1837 and 1916 and your correction should be minus 2.8 all right if i remove this again you can see it minus 2.8 no interpolation required all right you take this correction go back apply the correction of minus 2.8 as you can see once you apply that you get true altitude of 18 degrees 36.8 minutes now here is where the question starts to become a bit tricky or the solution becomes a bit tricky because you have to find three corrections for the polaris they are called a0 a1 and a2 all right so to find a0 a1 and a2 you actually have to go back into the nautical almanac all right now for 1992 and nautical almanac 1992 you have to find out towards the end uh, there are certain tables that you can find out for the polaris all right and there are, i'll show you, i'll show you those tables very soon but i just thought i'll give you a quick background about the tables so go into your nautical almanac and uh, see what i will do is i will go into the nautical almanac here uh, and uh, see these tables are called polaris pole star tables all right the heading is polaris pole star tables i don't know how good i'll do a job here but i've tried to get these tables from you uh, so these are this is the heading so this is actually the next page that's coming up as a scan but it's called polaris pole star tables all right now if you see the tables are about this bloody heading thing because i've scanned it in such a way it's not come out very well all right anyhow let's get into these tables now what you can see in these tables is the first correction here is a naught next one is a1 and the third one is a2 then you can also find out the azimuth 
so how do you find that out so basically you take go into the lha lha you take the lha aries value which in this case your lha is 58 degrees 55.7 which lies here between 50 and 50 this is your lha aries of 58 degrees 55.7 will lie between 50 to 59 so you can see if it's not very clear to i apologize if it's not i'll um, I, I can it's it's not very clear to you uh, i'll try to zoom in if i can there you go there you go all right hope hope that's better i hope that's better for you yeah so i have to zoom out a little bit so i can work with the pen here sorry about that if it's not very good so 50 to 59 your 58 degrees 55.7 of lh aries lies here all right and uh, somewhere here you can get your a naught value so how do you get your a naught value because your degrees is 58 degrees right that is from the top column but 55.7 means it's almost 0.9 so that means 0.9 it's here so this is your minutes column so 58 degrees is from the horizontal column the minutes column of the LH, LH Aries is the vertical column here this is the minutes column so 55.7 minutes also means 0.9 and that's why when i go horizontally like this i get a correction of 16.5 this is the correction i will use 16.5 all right so did you understand that so the degrees of 58 degrees of lh aries is from the horizontal column the 55.7 minutes of lh aries is from the vertical column so you have to convert it into decimal of a minute so that means if it's 55.7 divided by 60 divided by 16 it will be very close to 0.9 of a degree all right so that's why it's 0.9 of a degree all right that's why you see here it's a it's a degree uh, what you see here at the top is a degree shown because because this is actually 0.9 of a degree all right so hope that's uh, that's better to you so just go horizontally from 0.9 of a degree because it's 55.7 and then stop at this column here because this is where your 58 degrees is and you will get the first correction of a naught to get the second correction of a naught stay in the same column 50 to 59 but this time your vertical column shows your latitude your latitude given to is 18 degrees north somewhere here 18 degrees north will be between 10 and 20 come here no interpretation required you can see they are all 0.6 so you get this second correction of 0.6 so because this is 0.6 so you get the second correction here all right i'll erase this so you can see so you between 10 and 20 both are 0.6 so you know that 18 will also be 0.6 so you get this correction a1 here for a2 you see it's the month on the vertical column you stay under the same column of 50 to 59 the month of the site is september so you go into september here for september again you go horizontally and then you can see here this is the correction 0.3 that's your a2 correction so you get your a1 a2 and a not a1 and a2 from here and finally you can get your true azimuth from here your azimuth will also be in the same column as lh aries but this time again it's for latitude your latitude is between 10 and 20 sorry it's 18 degrees so 18 degrees comes between 0 and 20 here so just go between here and you can see that because 18 is closer to 20 i will go in horizontally from 20 and i will stop here and that's why my azimuth is i'll erase this and i can show you to you again because 18 is closer to 20 i will go here and then i'll stop here under the 50 to 59 column and then i get my azimuth of 359.7 so i got four values from here you have to remember these values when i go back because i don't want to go to and fro otherwise you guys will get confused all right so this that's how simple it is it's pretty simple to get these corrections so you have to apply the a naught a1 and a2 correction first and then i'll show you what to do with the azimuth so you can see i have applied the a naught a1 and a2 correction here they are all positive so you add them once you add all the corrections you get 18 degrees 54.2 you add these corrections to the true altitude once you get the sum just subtract one degree from it always and then you get your latitude of 17 degrees 54.2 minutes but i have named it north how did i name it north how do i know it's north or south can you tell me yeah because i told you before it is not visible from the southern hemisphere that's right it's not visible from southern hemisphere so it cannot be south latitude you can only view it from the northern hemisphere especially when this altitude is 18 degrees that you can see you cannot view it so it has to be north latitude 
and then you of course use your dr longitude given to you and then this becomes a position through which your position line passes through now remember your position line in this case is always east west remember i showed that to you in the beginning itself because your declination of your polaris is such that uh, it is always bearing north of the observer so that's why you know in olden days they used to use pole star for navigation and because pole star always bore north that's why right so this is the position your position line will be in this case will be east west you can write east west or you can write 090 to 270 whatever suits you all right finally we come to calculating the deviation now remember i got the true azimuth from the tables the final value of true azimuth was 359.7 then the compass azimuth is given to me in the question as 001 degrees compass that means my compass is more than my true and that's why the compass error is 1.3 degrees west so if you look at the diagram here look at the diagram here your true is 359.7 it's not exactly 360 359.7 your compass is 001 the compass is on the west of true and that's why your compass error this is your compass error is west 1.3 degree west the variation given to you in the question is 1.3 degrees east variation is the angle between true and magnetic that's why your magnetic goes on the east of true this is your variation in blue all right so if your variation is 1.3 degrees east and compass is 1.3 degree west your compass error is a combination of variation and deviation that's why your deviation is 2.6 degree west so deviation is nothing but the angle between magnetic and compass so you have to see where is your compass lying with respect to the magnetic so you can see compass is lying to the west of the magnetic and that's why this here becomes your deviation right so watch my other videos about compass errors if you didn't understand this concept of applying variation and deviation to get compass error but uh, some people have rules that if there are different names just add it and then put the name of the larger and all that but uh, you should understand all these things conceptually so that uh, you don't have to rely on rule of thumbs and uh, you know some funny kind of acronyms or something like that all right so i hope this video was simple enough for you to understand i'll put up more videos in future but this was requested by a few of my subscribers and i thought i'll put this up so thank you very much to all my subscribers and who send me um, comments and who write to me and who encourage me a lot i really appreciate the feedback uh, it gives me a lot of encouragement to put up more videos all right i'll see you soon with my next video bye